guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law is given by this equation here, where we have PV equals RT. Now we'll go through all the different parameters and then we'll look at the equations of state for uh, the ideal gas law. So here what we have is the gas constant R. Now this is different for each gas and it can be determined through these uh, published data values. So we have to be careful of the units that we're using as well because depending on our system, whether we are working in SI units or we work with imperial units, then it just depends on that as to what the value is going to be. So what we have here is we can see that the value of R for different substances can change. So air has a value of 0 0.287, whereas helium has a value of 2.0769. So again, you can get these values from published data. Now the value of R is dependent on the molecular mass of our system. So RU is the universal gas constant, R is the gas con constant for the individual types of gases. So in order to find the universal, we can rearrange this equation and we can have Rm equals RU. So therefore, if we have Ru, i.e. the universal gas constant, we have the molecular mass, we can then calculate the gas constant for the specific um, substance. So again, that's just highlighting the different um, parameters here. Now, if we take the equation here, then what we can do is we can start to rearrange this for different uh, purposes. So we start off with PV equals RT. Now, if we say that V is equal to M multiplied by V, then we can rearrange this to have PV equals MRT. This is one that is most familiar with uh, chemical engineers. Now, we can also simplify this and have MR is equal to the MN multiplied by R, which can also be written as N, so that's the number of moles, multiplied by the universal gas constant. So here we'd have PV equals NRT. So again, this is another one that is commonly used by chemical engineers. One that is not so common is V equals the number of moles multiplied by the average specific volume of the material. Now what we would therefore do is we can replace the V here with N and uh, V bar. And then what would happen is the Ns would cancel so we're left with PV bar is equal to the universal gas constant multiplied by the temperature. So depending on the information that we have, we can use and manipulate this equation to suit our system. And again, there we have all the different parameters here. So again, you can just take a look at these and uh, see if you can derive these equations again by yourself. But again, if you have problems, you can always refer back to this slide um, for some help. Now the ideal gas equation at two states for a fixed mass can be given by this expression here. So we have P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. So this is the relationship for the uh, equations of state. Now we'll look at all the different types in just a second. Now, when we have these types of systems, it is important to note that the ideal gas law makes the following set of assumptions. That we have the volume occupied by the gas molecules is negligible compared to the overall system, and it neglects the interaction forces between the molecules themselves. If we have any deviations from this behaviour, then with higher temperatures and lower pressures, we cannot assume ideal gas conditions. We would therefore have another type of 
uh, equations that we would have to solve. And we look at how to solve non-ideal gas systems in our uh, thermodynamics course. So if you want to know more about that, I'll put a link in the description to our thermodynamics course and you can take a look at that uh, in your spare time. Now, the equations of state, we have several different types that we'll look at here um, so is that you are familiar with all the different types so is that depending on the question and the information provided you will be able to solve regardless of uh, the, the type of information that you have. So here any equation that relates the pressure, the temperature and the specific volume is for the equation of state. Now this is in terms of the gas phase is for ideal gas equations of state. And the equation predicts the PVT behavior, so that is the pressure of the specific volume and the temperature of a gas, which is fairly accurate. Now, a gas and vapor are often used um, as synonymous words, whereas the gas is the vapor phase, is above the critical temperature, and vapor implies a gas that is not far from its state of condensation. So that's just a couple of points to note as we go through this, that if we refer to gas and we refer to vapour, that we can distinguish the two. So the first one here is Boyle's Law. Now Boyle's Law has the ratio between the volume and the pressure. So what we have fixed here is the temperature. So from this equation here, this is what we're going to manipulate between the pressures, the specific volume and the temperatures. So by fixing the temperature, what we have is the ratio of the volumes V1 over V2 is equal to the ratio of P2 over P1. Now when we cross multiply these, we get P1V1 is equal to P2V2, and that would equal some form of constant. So where this becomes useful is if we fix the temperature of our system, if we know the uh, properties at say point 1 and we know the pressure at point 2 we can then calculate the value of V2 and that's where these equations of state can be very useful if we fix one of the variables we can therefore find the unknown values now we have the Charles law which is when we fix the pressures this time so by fixing the pressures, we have the relationship V1 over V2 is equal to T1 over T2. Again, that's manipulating the equation that we've seen at the beginning of the equations of state. So when we cross multiply these, if we needed to, we would have T2 V1 equals T1 V2. So because we mix the 2s and the 1s, what we try and do is group them together. So what we can therefore do is have V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So we keep all the 1s in the same term and all the 2s in the same term. And that again will equal some constant. And then we have the Amaton's law, which is we fix the, the specific volume. Now the pressure of the ideal gas will vary directly with the absolute temperature. So we know that the, the pressure and the temperature has a significant effect on the properties of the ideal gases. So here by fixing the volume, we have the relationship of P1 over P2 is equal to T1 over T2. So again, grouping the 1s and the 2s, we get P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. And that again will be equal to some constant. So if we know the conditions at point 1, we know the temperature at point 2, we can determine the pressure at point 2. So then, just as a summary, that this is the three ideal gas equations of state based on this equation here. And if we fix for Boyle's law, we fix the temperature. For Charles law, we fix the pressure. And for the Amaton's law, we fix the specific volume. And that's just a summary of our equations of state. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept of the ideal gas law. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us grow our community of chemical engineers. And we'd love to see you in another video.